So I know I said I was only doing Christmas videos this month, but I'm sorry. I couldn't help it. Besides, every Guillermo del Toro film feels like a gift, so it counts enough for me. Now, to point out the obvious that everybody will, this has been a year for Pinocchio films. We had Pinocchio A True Story, which wasn't a true story, we had Robert Zemeckis make possibly the worst Disney live action remake, and we have Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio. And I think we all knew before its release this would be the best one, and we were correct. This film, for one, looks amazing. There's no janky CGI, no poorly under-animated sequences, just pure, heartwarming, impressive stop-motion animation. Every inch of this film is so detailed and choked with nuance. You can tell that every frame was so specifically designed and was not lazily put together. In any one shot, you can look at the background elements and see them moving regardless of whether they're the focus or not. Everything has life. It's clear that so much effort and care was bled into animating this film and honestly, it gives me hope that stop motion animation makes a good comeback. Between this and Wendell and Wilde, we have had two stellar examples of what this medium can do and even progress with the use of computers, and animation technology is helping it all along. All the design elements are Perfect. Every character model fits their character so well, and I love how simplistic yet intricate the designs are, like Sebastian or Pinocchio himself. Like when Pinocchio lies, his nose doesn't just grow, it branches, it develops and evolves, and that's just used to such great effect throughout this story. Among the animation, they have a ridiculously good cast to match it. I mean, the narration by Ewan McGregor, as well as his regular lines as Sebastian the Cricket, is a really fun performance, and definitely shows me that he's ready for his time in the voice acting realm again, since Rodney Copperbottom could not have been his legacy. If anything, I hope he gets on audiobooks and starts narrating novels or something, he has the perfect voice for it. But he's not even the best part of the cast. That one goes to either Christopher Waltz, who I instantly recognised and gladly welcomed into this film, but also, most importantly, David Bradley as Geppetto. Oh. My. Word. This man is fucking incredible. See, in this film, unlike basically every other adaptation of the original story, we get a full Geppetto backstory, and it's not done in some flashback technically. It's given the first 20 minutes or so of screen time to really drive home this film's motivation. Bradley delivers some of the most heart-wrenching moments in this film with expert precision. At times it feels like he was born to be a voice actor. He's near unrecognisable and he's by a country mile the best thing about this film. To pair with that we get Geppetto basically the entire movie because it's equally about Geppetto as it is Pinocchio. A lot of what this film is trying to discuss is parenting, the relationship between dads and sons, but it's also about the effects of grief and mourning and how much of a toll it can take on not only your life but your soul. It can transform you, change your perspective, but it can also drive you and make you a better human overall afterwards. The story of Pinocchio has always been about moral quandary and gaining a conscience, learning right from wrong and the importance of honesty, but this film really kicks it up a bit and delivers it in such a way. We contrast Geppetto and Pinocchio with Podesta and Candlewick, who are Nazi elitists and excessively wooden and cold. And yes, you heard me right, this is kind of about World War II as well. Which may be one of the reasons you won't be surprised when I tell you this film can get incredibly dark. Set in place in fascist Italy, there is quite a lot of commentary on doing for your country and cowardice in not only serving but in general. What makes somebody weak? By this point you may be thinking this film is talking about a lot, and you'd be right. There are layers upon layers to this film, it's unreal. One day I may pick one theme of this film and analyse it because it truly is masterful in quite a lot of ways. One of the ways I don't think is as masterful is in the character of Pinocchio himself. In the beginning he is quite grating and I understand that may be the point, he may supposed to get on your nerves. 
But my lord, does this fucking wooden boy shred my will to live for the first third of this film. Later on, as he learns about responsibility and any part of the slew of already spoken about concepts, he becomes more tolerable, especially towards the end, which, if I'm being completely transparent with you, could have come much earlier. I may get some hate for this, but this film is for sure too long. A lot of sequences stick around for far too long and some of the musical moments extend past their welcome if they were even welcomed there in the first place. Sometimes it's a difficult sit through, but overall is a massively enjoyable film. I think it is the best Pinocchio film, yes, including the original Disney animated classic, and I don't really think it's close. Guillermo del Toro just understands how to fit so much meaning into a film without bloating it and without subjecting the audience to torture in the form of speaking down moral messages to them. He trusts his audience to pick up on what he's putting forth and he creates films in such a way that even if you don't quite understand what he's going for or catch what he's trying to convey, it matters very little because the film is a brilliant and masterful film on the surface too. There are more things I'd like to get into but possibly for a later video because I want to go into specific themes and I don't want to spoil it for anybody so yeah, those are my thoughts on Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio and I'm going to give it a spectacular 8 out of 10. If you've seen it, let me know what you thought, if not, let me know if you will and let me know what you think of this video. So whether it's one of the many Pinocchio films this year or not, as always, keep watching movies.